Hello and welcome to this uh, Asante Academy of Chinese Medicine presentation. The topic is uh, Fundamental Theory of Traditional Chinese Medicine. My name is Alex Eftime and uh, I'll be guiding you through this topic. The syllabus of this uh, presentation uh, revolves around the yin and yang theory, the five elements theory, and uh, there is a discussion on the vital substances in traditional Chinese medicine. Uh, we have a few learning outcomes. We would like you to have a basic understanding of these theories. The lecture plan is uh, uh, made in a way that uh, would help you uh, gradually progress to understanding these principles. To make TCM fundamental theory more accessible, this presentation was separated into three parts. This first part will uh, discuss the uh, topic of the yin and yang theory. The yin and yang theory is a basic theory in traditional Chinese medicine. It uh, postulates the existence of two principles, yin and yang. Often we see it, this um, theory presented in relationship to a uh, symbol and uh, uh, this became so common that uh, um, the symbol is uh, is called the yin and yang although it does have its own name it's called taijito uh, this symbol um, can be used to explain the relationships between these two principles now the principles themselves uh, when we look at them individually, yin describes what is dark, turbid, feminine. Um, it has an inwards movement, so it's receptive, and uh, a downwards movement descending to earth. As opposed to that, uh, yang is considered to be bright, clear, masculine, has an outward, outwards movement, and uh, it's rising to heaven. There are five different um, relationships between yin and yang. The first relationship is opposition. Now, these two principles oppose one another. We can imagine, we can easily imagine fire and water. If one of them uh, is in excess, the other is inhibited, the other is controlled, is restricted. And uh, this is uh, the a uh, fundamental understanding of the opposition of yin and yang. Basically, one restricts and one controls the other. The second relationship between yin and yang is that of interdependence. Now, there is no yin without yang and there is no yang without yin. There is no cold without heat, no light without darkness, no um, no uh, up without down, left without right. Ideally, we would, uh, when we understand the concepts, uh, we uh, um, contrast it, we compare it to another. So within the theory of yin and yang, uh, these two only exist in relationship with one another. That means that uh, yin and yang they do not exist independently. They only exist one in relationship to the other. The next type of relationship is inter-consuming and supporting. Now, this may be a bit more uh, complex in a sense, but um, it's easier to understand if we consider that these principles are in a constant state um, of movement, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a dynamic state. In this dynamic state, consumption of one leads to gaining the other. That essentially means that um, um, if we go back to the uh, example of uh, uh, fire and water, uh, we look at uh, uh, the example of, of heat that uh, 
um, restrains water. But as it restrains the water, the water becomes hotter, it turns to steam at some point, and it basically uh, transforms in that sense from uh, a yin manifestation to a yang manifestation. So as it's consumed, it transforms into the other. But they exist in relative balance. And when it comes to relative balance, it is probably better to discuss this in the context of the fourth relationship, intertransforming. Now, we look at the extreme um, situation. Um, the, the theory, the yin and yang theory, uh, postulates that extreme yin transforms to yang, extreme yang transforms to yin. Um, within the previous example, uh, when uh, yang is extreme and all the water has turned into steam, that goes, that forms clouds and it returns to um, a liquid form to water. So yang transforms to yin. Um, at the same time, we can look at the idea of uh, climbing a mountain. When we reach the top of the mountain, there is no way up. There's only down. So when we reach the extreme, it transforms into the opposite. The same goes with, uh, with a valley. When we reach the bottom of a valley, there's no way down. There's only up. Now, there is a fifth relationship. Uh, that uh, um, is um, often seen in, in clinical um, practice, in the clinical practice of uh, traditional Chinese medicine, and that is infinite divisibility. So, as, um, as much as, or as further as we want to look, we can divide yin and yang. Um, and uh, one exists uh, within the other, um, and ultimately, as as we look at um, at this principle, um, um, there is always um, in, in the context of, of a dynamic relationship, and in the context of these four different types of interactions that uh, I previously mentioned. Um, we can look at these two phenomena as uh, uh, being relative to one another. And because they are relative to one another, um, we can look at them as being always um, the case for one or the other to be more predominant. But even within that predominance, there is a division. So, an example would be steam, as I mentioned earlier. Steam, we can look at it as a, as a young manifestation, but within that manifestation, there's still water, there's still yin, there's still a, a material component to it. In clinical practice, we use ideas such as excess of deficiency of one or the other. Um, we often hear the um, uh, idea that there may be a real excess um, or a relative excess, or um, most more often we will hear about this as um, as empty uh, heat, for example. Uh, this uh, slide here um, shows that there are essentially two forms of uh, excess, and they are in relationship with uh, um, with this this horizontal line, which uh, we consider to be a level of um, uh, balance, a level of which is which is necessary to for a person to be healthy. And there is a real excess, and that real excess. Um, uh, definitely has this this uh, strong impact on the human body, and uh, is uh, is often uh, the case that uh, people having real excess uh, of uh, heat in this case uh, they would suffer uh, from quite dramatic symptoms. Um, but uh, there is 
also the idea of a relative excess and empty heat in this case, which is um, relatively higher here in this in this uh, second aspect. The heat, uh, the the red uh, column, is relatively higher than the blue one, which represents the yin. But none of them reaches the level of which uh, we would uh, need for a person to to be um, at uh, or in a state of uh, health or in a state of balance. But because of this relative difference, um, there will be manifestations of heat. An example of this, uh, quite common, would be uh, hot flushes in menopause, when uh, uh, there is um, a deficiency of, of the yin and uh, a relative excess of yang, which manifests as uh, uh, these these uh, hot sensations uh, for for women uh, um, that have reached the, the menopause age. Join me soon for the second part of this presentation where we are going to discuss uh, about the chi, blood and body fluids. Thank you very much for watching and have a very good day.